Well, hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit. We are interested in knowing God on this platform. And I have said it before that you must know God within the context of His existence, within the frame of His reference. And the Bible declares in John chapter 4 verse 24 that God is Spirit. And so School of the Spirit is about submitting to the wisdom and the understanding as supplied by the Spirit of God through His Word. So if you're interested in the things of God, if you're interested in the things of the Spirit, this is your platform. And I want you to uh, get hooked up right now because we're about to go on a journey. We're going to begin um, a series this time around, uh, and I title it The Holy Spirit I and I. The Holy Spirit and I. Um, for the next few episodes, we're going to be talking about basic um, facts about the Holy Spirit and His relationship with the believer. How our relationship with the Holy Spirit affects our walk with God. And that's all we are going to be discussing on this series. And it's a very interesting subject, um, something that should be talked about again and again because. The Holy Spirit has been given as our guide, has been given to inspire us, to instruct us in the ways of God. You know, God said in as Ezekiel chapter 36, I believe in verse 26, he says, I will put my spirit in you and I'll cause you to walk in my status and my judgment. So uh, it's the Holy Spirit that helps to reveal the Father to us. The Holy Spirit and I. So let's get started right now. Uh, in the Old Testament, God operated with men in somewhat a unique way, a unique pattern. God, um, in relating with men, will always come through men to speak to men. Fortunately or unfortunately, there were only three kinds of people in the Old Testament that had the privilege of walking under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And that's because the new birth experience was long away in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, God could only cause His Spirit to rest upon either kings or priests or prophets and because they were the ones that were anointed by God to serve uh, as intermediates between God and his people but in the New Testament because of the new birth experience we all are born again and we have the privilege of receiving the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit Jesus on his way to the cross in John chapter 14 verse 26 told his disciples that I will send you another comforter and he shall be with you. He shall abide in you forever. Means that this is the era where God no longer visits or comes upon a man for an assignment and leaves. But God has come to dwell or tabernacle in us. So every believer, everyone that is born again is born of the Spirit. And because of that, the Holy Spirit now dwells within us. And because of this, we are to develop or to cultivate a relationship with God because He lives in us by His Spirit. Today I want to talk to you simply about how the Spirit communicates with us. In Romans chapter 8, I want to read two verses for you uh, because this is what we are talking about today. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 16. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So the Spirit of God that we have received, it's his presence in us that makes us understand that we have been adopted as children, as sons of God in Christ Jesus. 
and the bible says he bears witness with our spirit so um bearing witness is a major functionality of the holy spirit as it has to do with his communication with us he communicates with us by bearing witness and there are primarily two kinds of witness that the holy spirit uh, bears first of all the bible says he bears witness with our spirits that we are children of god so he bears witness now the witness of the holy spirit within us is what i would liken to an inner knowing this is not a knowledge that uh, is fabricated in your mind or preconceived this is a knowledge that goes beyond your mind into your heart it's almost as if it's a knowledge that comes from within you it's a knowledge that comes with so much assurance and confidence it's not a knowledge that is based on reasoning no it's a knowledge that is based on the influence of your of the holy spirit with your intuition and i call it the knowing of faith because the moment you receive that information due to the spirit of god bearing witness in you there is an assurance and confidence in you to know that this is not just you this is god speaking to you and you can hang on the strength of that word to obey it and find the hand of God at work in your life. So the Spirit bears witness in our spirit. Jesus experienced it many times. You must understand that Jesus in his time on earth, while he lived on earth as a human being, he had to depend on the Holy Spirit for everything. And so the Bible says in John chapter 3 that God had given him his spirit without measure. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38 he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power so everything Jesus did especially during this time of his ministry was propelled was empowered by the Holy Spirit everything he knew supernaturally was by the Holy Spirit because when Jesus came to live on earth as a human being he left his godlike qualities you know God is all-knowing, He's all-present, He's all-powerful. But when Jesus lived on earth as a human being, He was not all-knowing. He had to depend on the knowledge that came to Him by the witness of the Spirit part-time. I'll give you two examples. Number one, in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to verse 30, the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says as soon as she taught Jesus the the flow of blood dried up and she was healed and then the bible says i believe in verse 30 that jesus knowing in himself knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him he knew by the witness of the spirit knowing in himself so it comes from within you it's the spirit of god bearing witness he just tells you and you just have this knowing that this has happened or that has happened this was many times how Jesus was able to sense things supernaturally or to know things supernaturally. Another instance was in John chapter 2, in verse 23, 24, thereabout. The Bible says that Jesus, this was shortly after his first miracle uh, in the wedding at Cana, where it became obvious to everyone that attended that wedding and to the whole of Israel that Jesus was manifesting his glory as the son of god the bible says that jesus did not commit himself to people for he knew who they were this knowledge is more than just the physical activities of the people or uh, the things about them about their everyday life it was more than that it was a knowledge that discerned the heart of the people jesus by the witness of the spirit was able to even discern the hearts the thoughts of the people many times the pharisees will come to him and the bible says it, he would answer their question knowing their thoughts so this kind of knowledge 
which um, is revealed comes by the witness of the spirit and if you are born again and you have the holy spirit particularly if you've uh, been a christian for a while you will be a, uh, you'll agree with me that many times you've had this experience of knowledge just coming from within you you just knowing things supernaturally you cannot prove the authenticity you cannot say how you know them you just know this is how this should be done or this is what will happen or this is what this is and eventually it happens or eventually you are right we experience this every day and i believe that if we get to master the witness of the spirit in our spirit we will be able to hear god with clarity and with precision applying what we hear in our everyday life to see the grace of god flow through us so the spirit bears witness with our spirit number two the spirit bears witness to the word of god you see the word of god remains letters until it is infused by the ministry of the spirit in second corinthians chapter 3 paul said in verse 5 that we are ministers not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life the spirit of God is the author of the word. He's the one that inspired everyone who wrote the Bible. Second Peter chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 21 that holy men spoke as they were moved by the Spirit of God. So he bears witness to the word. In other words, he makes the word living, he makes the word active beyond just information written on a book what makes it carry life and power capable of producing impact and creating activity in the lives of people is the ministry of the holy spirit in acts chapter 2 scriptures i'll read for you acts chapter 14 and in verse 3 this is um one of Paul the Apostle's uh, missionary journey. They were preaching somewhere. And the Bible says, Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of His grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. He bore witness to the word of His grace. As they spoke the word, God confirmed that they were speaking the word of God by releasing the manifestation of signs and wonders to be done through their hands so that the signs and wonders the miracles that they wrought or that god wrought through them was a confirmation to the people that these were messengers of god these were servants of god even in the case of jesus the bible says in acts chapter 10 verse 38 that he was anointed with the holy spirit and with power and he went about doing good healing those who were oppressed so everything he did supernaturally was a sign that he was empowered by the Spirit of God. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 4, another scripture. This is a, you would want to say, a true definition of the life of anyone who is called by God as an apostle. God also, chapter 2 of Hebrews verse 4. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His own will. The Bible says God bore witness by the Holy Spirit through signs and wonders, various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are three categories of the manifestation of God through the disciples, through the apostles. He said, through signs and wonders, through various miracles, and through the manifestation of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit bears witness to the Word. What will make the world listen to us is the manifestation, the supernatural impact of the Word of God through us. So the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to bring proof, to bring evidence to bring authenticity to validate the word of god 
that has been committed to us. You remember Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall become my witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is one who, who produces or provides substantial proof or evidence. Uh, the reason why we can validate the person and the ministry of Jesus Christ spreading the word of God is because we have the Holy Spirit. So when the Spirit of God comes upon you, one way or the other, His target is to ensure that your life becomes a proof that Jesus Christ came on earth, died for the sins of mankind, rose again, and has given us eternal life. And this life, God wants everyone to share in it, that everyone can and should become a son of God. So everything we do supernaturally, before mankind is attributed to the witnessing uh, ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I know that God wants to use your life as a proof and evidence of the coming of His Son to bring salvation to mankind. I know God wants to use you. But first of all, before God can validate or produce evidence through your life before god can make you a witness you must be ready to receive the witness of his spirit that's going to be all for today but i'm going to pray for you now and we'll continue in the next episodes ahead we're still talking about the holy spirit and i so get ready to experience the witness of the spirit in your life Learn to always look out for that knowledge that proceeds from within your heart. And the more you obey and follow it, is the clearer the witness of the Spirit will be to you. Father, I pray for these ones right now. And I ask by your Holy Spirit that you will bear witness to them, that they are sons and daughters of God. You will bear witness to them, releasing truth and conviction through their heart. Guide them by the witness of your spirit. And bear witness to your word through their mouth and through their lives. Make them living epistles. Make them living proofs. Manifestations of your power and your grace. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you in the next episode. We are still talking the Holy Spirit and I. Please do well to share this video with someone who truly loves God and wants to know more about the Holy Spirit. And do well to subscribe if this is your first time watching. I'll see you in the next episode.